This is the ultimate dungeon quest guide. I'm going to be going over all the aspects and mechanics you'll want to know as you get into dungeon quest. I'll talk about levels, classes, gold and experience mechanics, wave defense, raids, dungeons, the difficulties, what hardcore means, spell and attack power, skills, upgrades, legendaries, trading, ideal raids, and collectibles. So, let's get into it. To start off, every player starts with a choice on their class. While there are technically several different classes, the main two is Mage and Warrior. If you want an in-depth guide on all the branch classes, you can see the video here. While the two classes sound vastly different, there is no obvious difference between the two when it comes to damage and health. The only real difference is the type of spells as they are different for each class. So while Mage and Warrior may deal the same damage, there could be an advantage to either or if a spell has a longer range than its class's counterpart. With the classes, they come with their respective skills. While new newer players may bump all the skills at once, this is wrong, very wrong. When you choose a class, you only want to focus on that class. You do not want to split physical, spell, and stamina equally as you'll be severely underpowered. As shown here with me being a mage, most of my points are in spell power as I'm a damage focused mage, with a few in health to bump it up. Note that stamina and health are used interchangeably. This is what you'll want to do for your respective class. To note, while they are the main two classes, the two most popular branches are healer and tank. Tanks do have their own armor set, however it isn't a viable build alone. To start, healers are usually people using tank armor with all their skills into stamina slash health and using a mage weapon as heal spells scale with spell power. Tanks are also someone using tank armor with max stamina, using a mage weapon with taunt spells. Taunts make all the enemies with the exceptions of bosses focus on that one character while healers are a must-have for almost any dungeon experience. Tanks are extremely optional and are mostly not used. With that being said, let's talk about levels. Levels are only used to indicate what dungeons you can go in, what difficulties you can do, and what items you can equip. So, once you reach level 100, you can optionally go to a level 100 plus lobby. You level up experience by destroying enemies in a dungeon. It's important to note that you still keep experience even if you fail a dungeon and that boss monsters typically give more experience than typical monsters or regular monsters. Alongside experience, you can also gain gold on completion of a dungeon. You either typically get gold by completing a dungeon or selling extra or any items slash spells you obtain. The latter is the most efficient method. With experience, gains you levels and thus skill points. Gold is used to upgrade armor and weapons. That has its own unique formula we're about to get into. You only want to upgrade a weapon to its specific type, mage to mage, warrior to warrior. Every weapon comes with its own specific damage slash power. This is a randomly generated on drop between a set of numbers. So you can get a weapon that is weaker or stronger than quote unquote usual based on luck. How upgrading works as a formula, you can decide before upgrading how your weapon or how strong your weapon will get. You take a weapon by its spell or damage and add it to the amount of upgrade slots it has by a decimal place. For example, with this mighty frozen greatsword, it has a damage of 664 and an upgrade potential of 92. I would add 664 by 920. So if we get a calculator here, that would be 664 by 920. Oh, sorry, I added times. So, 664 by 920. 1,584. So, if I go to upgrade, choose that sword, see that as physical damage, so it's warrior, spend the spend all button, upgrade, 1,584. Exactly as my calculator said. That is the simple formula. That results in the max potential damage I can get on this weapon. That being said, everything applies to armor and its health stat as well. 
Armor, armor also buffs its respective class by a large amount with the addition of a health stat. The health stat and armor will be the biggest factor in determining your health, and it is a number gen and it is also a number generated between an X and Y value. Let's get into dungeons. Every player can play a certain dungeon based on their level. As you level up, you unlock new difficulties to your dungeon, and eventually a new dungeon. Each harder level, each harder level to a dungeon, like Insane to Nightmare, just scales enemy damage and health. For every dungeon run, you can decide whether or not to turn on hardcore mode. This means you'll only have one life while inside of a dungeon. However, you'll gain an additional piece of loot. You typically gain one. It's important to note that non-hardcore runs, every death takes off 10 seconds off the timer. If the timer runs out, you'll gain nothing but the experience you got along the way. There's also the option of wave defense, which is an alternative play style. It'll send enemies at you in waves, and every certain amount of waves, it'll spawn a random boss from that dungeon which gives one piece of loot going on until you die. You can also gain titles, but they are purely cosmetic. Eventually, you'll be high enough to start raids, which have 30 tiers. Defeating a tier unlocks the next, and losing demotes you by one. Raids consist of a single boss, making them a fast experience gaining method for that respective level. Let's talk about legendaries. There is a rare chance to gain a legendary after completion of a strictly and only a dungeon at nightmare difficulty. Each dungeon has two legendaries, one for mage and one for warrior, with the exception of desert temple and winter outpost. They only have a single legendary which is split between both classes equally. It's important to note that dungeons at volcanic chambers and above have a chance to drop a legendary spell for its respective class. The last thing to talk about is trading. A lot of people get scammed because they do not know the value of their items. It's important to note that legendaries are often used as a currency and bribery technique. Since they are rare, there are a lot of collectors. Any legendaries below the current max dungeon, the current one being Gilded Skies, have purely collector value and not real value. While I can't tell you the exact value of a legendary, just use your discretion. Trading is simply one puts items on one side and the others on theirs, and once the players both accept their items transfer. It's extremely important to note, you may hear the term god stat or any other synonyms. As I said earlier, each item's power and or health are determined by a random number between a certain X and Y. So a weapon may be stronger or weaker based on usual luck. This can heavily influence item prices. Since it's typically only important with legendaries, I'll talk about them. That you have a simple value ranging from 1 and 100, while the average for that legendary is 50. You can get either stronger at 75 or weaker at 25 based on luck. However, at a rare time, an item drops at a max potential, that being 100 for this legendary. That would be considered a god stat, and is extremely valuable and extremely collectible, more so than the usual item. It's important to note that even though it's a small niche, some collectors do collect bottom stats would be a 1 for that legendary, at its lowest potential. I would bring up collectibles and such, however I have a separate video going into depth on that and what they are. You can watch it here. So, that's it for today's videos guys. If you liked this guide, consider subscribing, liking, commenting, encouragement, whatever you want to do. Amien loves, and uh, see you guys.